Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn the difference between the different scales of measurement that are used usually in our research that uh, whenever we collect the data and must have the knowledge regarding the different scales so that we can easily analyze our data. So whenever it comes to measurement, it re generally refers to assigning the numerical values to observations. But it is not necessary that there must be the numerical values and not only the numbers but the levels or the categories or the uh, uh, you can say the names can also be considered as the scales of measurement. So today we will learn all these four how they differ from each other with the help of examples as well. So stay tuned till end. First of all we have the nominal scale of measure. Nominal scale basically refers to the names, tags, la labels or categories. It refers to some name. It is not referring to any numerical value. So the nominal scale refers to some kind of names or levels or labels. So it is not necessary that the nominal uh, that a nominal scale should consist of names, tags or lab labels or categories. This is basically the basic of nominal scale. You can assign numbers to the uh, to the names or tags or labels that you are using for measuring in your research. So you uh, you can say uh, you can assign one two, but it is not necessary nominal scales that you assign the numbers in an ordered manner. There is no order required in nominal scale. So that means you cannot do any arithmetic or mathematical operation in nominal scale. So this is a very important point that you must keep in your mind as it is the basic of the difference between the four types that there is no mathematical operation um, possible in nominal scale because there is no order in this scale in comparison to the rest of the three. So it means you, you can assign numbers but, but arbitrarily. Another thing is it is a qualitative level of measurement. Why it is a qualitative level of measurement? Because it is defining the quality of the levels. One level differ from the other on the basis of its quality. So the example of the nominal scale is, uh, so I will give you the multiple examples as, so here are the few examples of the nominal scale. Example number one is gender. So gender usually whenever you consider the variable of gender in your research, so it usually consists of either male or female. So you can assign 0 or 1 to the male and 2 to the female. But it is not necessary. As we have discussed above, there is no requirement of order in nominal. So in order to make the data uniform, sometimes you need to uh, convert all your data in a numerical um, uh, in, a, a, in numerical way so you can replace the uh, your categories by the um, uh, by the different numbers so for the for those numbers it is not necessary that they should be in order as you need not to do the numerical operations on those numbers so it um, you can assign 0 1 2 3 it depends on you on your convenience as well another example is the emotions emotions can be happy or H for happy, S for sad or angry. So you can assign similarly 1, 2 or 3 values to them. Another example is the marital status. So marital status is usually either you are married or s single or divorced and so on. So these are the different levels in the nominal scale that are basically names or labels or tags or categories. Then you have the qualification, so whether you are, are you are doing bachelor's or master's or in PhD or whatever the level you are considering in your research. So these are the different levels of nominal scale that you should know um, that uh, you um, uh, that you should know in order to understand the difference between them for your research. So after nominal scale comes the ordinal scale. What is ordinal scale? So ordinal scale is somewhat similar to nominal scale in a way uh, that uh, in ordinal scale you can have the names, tags, labels or categories but also you can have the numbers but if you have the numbers that those should be ordered. In nominal scale there is no requirement of order but in ordinal scale as its name as well is also indicating uh, that the numbers should be in an ordered manner. And they should be ordered. So basically uh, in ordinal scale the num ordering of the number is required to understand the high or low values or levels. So uh, and 
Another important thing regarding ordinal scale is it does not explain the distance between the points. So it means the numbers that are basically assigned to the different levels as we have seen in the nominal scale as well. Those are just the numbers in an ordered manner but they you cannot say that the distance between the two points is equal. So it means the numbers in, an in the ordinal scale does not explain the distance between points which ultimately means that, they, they, that there will be no mathematical operation in the ordinal scale as well. So no mathematical operation is possible as similarly as in case of the nominal scale. So this scale is also qualitative in nature. So both of these scales are qualitative in nature because we are discussing the quality of something just as in no nominal scale we have the gen gender, the quality of gender either someone is male or female, the quality of emotions or the, you can say the, sta the, level, of the um, level of any uh, variable. So same is the case in ordinal scale, it is also qualitative. So the examples of the ordinal scales are, first example is the handwriting scale. So handwriting scale, there are different levels of the handwriting like, like you can say it could be excellent, it could be good, it could be fair or it could be poor. So the l these are the levels just like in nominal scale. But when I assign the values, it will be 1, it will be 2, it will be 3 and it will be 4. So these numbers should be in an ordered manner. So that we can easily define the high and low value. So it is very important in ordinal scale. And this is how it dif differs from the nominal scale where there is no requirement of order. Here our requirement is to explain or to mention the low and high level or high, high value and to differentiate the different levels. So the numbers here are not arbitrary that are assigned as in case of nominal scale. Similarly in the customer satisfaction um, uh, customer satisfaction scale we can have so in customer satisfaction scale we have the levels as the level number one is very much satisfied then level two is satisfied level three is is neutral level four is unsatisfied and level five is very unsatisfied. So these are the five levels they should be in order on the basis of the um, of the high and low values. Similarly in case of agreement so agreement level could be like strongly agree is one or you can say it depends on you are you uh, assigning one to strongly agree or what. Then you have agree is will be given to two then you have then you have the third then you have neither agree nor disagree then fourth level is disagree and fifth le level is strongly disagree. So this is how there are the different levels and how the 1, 2, 3 is assigned to these levels. Sometimes such scales are some such scales are called Likert scale. Sometimes thi this scale is considered in the interval and sometimes it is considered in the ordinal. When you are not considering their arithmetic operation it is considered as ordinal. But when it comes to considering the arithmetic operations of these values it is considered an interval scale. So this is a there is a controversy on the Likert scale that whether it is a part of ordinal or interval scale. Then we have the likelihood similarly likelihood have the different levels just like above examples. So this is the this is how the ordinal um, uh, ordinal scale is defined and explained. Then we have the interval scale. So in interval scale we must have the numbers in an ordered manner and, the and there should be a proportional difference between the points. Now what does it mean by the proportional di difference? Let's draw a diagram here for your understanding. For example this is a scale. So this is an interval scale and on this scale we have 1 here, 2 here and 3 here. So in this scale the distance between this point and this that is between 1 and 2 and the distance between 2 and 3 should be equal or is equal in interval scale. When it this distance is equal it means the scale is interval. Another important thing is there is no absolute zero in the interval scale. So what does it mean by absolute zero? I will discuss it with the help of example. Af besides this, another important property is this is quantitative level of measurement because here we are, um, we are comparing the things on the basis of quantity. So there is no true zero exist in the interval scale. And in such kind of scale, we have the measurements in terms of units. 
like in case if i say that the difference between 1 and 2 inches is the same between, uh, as the distance between 2 and 3 inches so let's consider its example it's a quantitative level of measurement uh, the first example of the interval scale is the temperature now the temperature in which scale it is very important here the temperature in fahrenheit and celsius scale not in kelvin when the temperature is in fahrenheit or celsius scale the scale the uh, uh, scale will uh, will be interval why because there is no absolute zero in degree in temperature in degree fahrenheit and celsius scale so we cannot say at zero degree degree fahrenheit there is a complete absence of uh, you can say heat and similarly on zero um, uh, on zero uh, celsius there is a complete absence of heat so on both zero degree fahrenheit so it means there is no reference temperature in the degree fahrenheit and celsius so we cannot say that the uh, that the temperature at zero degree fahrenheit is the complete absence of uh, heat and uh, it means we do not have the reference point in the temperature of fahrenheit and celsius scale but we can say that in interval scale the difference between 100 and 90 degree fahrenheit is the same as the difference between 70 and 60 degree fahrenheit so it is considered as an interval scale similarly in age we do not have an absolute zero age or you can say we do not have a um, we, uh, we never say that uh, anyone any person has, uh, has zero age or we, we cannot compare the age of two persons with the reference point of zero so it is also considered as an interval scale another is the gmat score uh, you cannot achieve a zero credit you cannot achieve a zero credit score or, uh, or gmat score so there, there is a complete absence of zero in the score so it is also considered as the interval score so basically in the interval scale uh, we have uh, we do not have an absolute zero or um, uh, uh, due to which we cannot make a reference with the help of the zero value just as in case of temperature we have seen that there is no zero degree fahrenheit or if um, uh, if there is zero degree fahrenheit it doesn't mean that there is a complete absence of heat so it uh, th this is how the interval scale differs so in ratio scale we have the we have ordered numbers have, and the difference between the numbers is proportional and there is an absolute zero point in the ratio scale so let's draw the ratio scale so that you can easily differentiate between interval and ratio if we have a scale like this so we can say here it's one it's zero here it's two it's three it's four so one thing is the ordered another thing is the distance between these two is same or equal and you can say that this distance is twice as compared to this distance if this is a this is two times of a this is two times of a so it means we have a reference point with which we can compare the different values so this is how it differs from the interval uh, from the interval scale it is also quantitative in nature because we are co comparing the values on the basis of numbers or quantities so this is how they differ from each other so it is also quantitative in nature so the examples of the ratio scale is uh, the common examples are height weight temperature temperature in kelvin keep this in mind that kelvin temperature has an absolute zero which means there is a complete absence of heat at zero kelvin so in the uh, uh, while uh, as compared to the celsius and fahrenheit it, um, where there is a, an absence of the absolute zero while in case of height and weight same is the case we have the absolute zeros we can compare the the height of the uh, of the persons we can compare the weight of the persons as with the uh, with the zero reference point hence the uh, absolute zero the important thing uh, in considering um, uh, 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 the important thing in ratio sc scale is the uh, absolute zero characteristic it is very important to understand its concept absolute zero characteristic basically indicates an absolute absence of the variable of interest at zero it means at zero there will be no height it is clear at zero uh, if i write here at zero there will be no height there will be no weight at zero and there will be no temperature less than zero at the temperature at the kelvin scale 
so this is how the absolute zero is defined in the ratio scale so so we can say that at zero kelvin the, uh, after zero kelvin there will be nothing nothing can be colder than the absolute zero on the kelvin scale so same is the case of height weight and uh, and all those variables where uh, those variables are not defined at that zero so you can say at that zero point there is no value of that variable so that's all from today's lecture